What's going on, Welsh man? Pat Caesar, Caesar LLC, towing and roadside services. Man, it's been hectic. Your homie's been super busy. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm out in these streets right now, man. I'm in Samson right now, and I was thinking, I had this video ideal that, that I wanted to put out, and this is it, man. This three things about the towing industry that's right in your face, in your eyes, and you probably don't even realize it, man. So we're going to get into this. I, I might actually have five. I'm going to say three, but it may be five. Stay to the end and let me know what y'all think. Let's go. All right, man. So first off, man, thank y'all for all y'all that be subscribing and hollering and commenting down below, man. I really do appreciate that. All the more interaction we get, like the better it is. So I mean, even share these videos, man. Tell people, hey, man, you got a homie over here. He's trying to help people in the Toronto community and really in entrepreneurship in general. But, you know, thank y'all, man. Thank y'all. Keep the love coming. So first thing about the towing industry that's like right in your face that you probably don't realize is that realistically towing is actually very boring uh let me put the camera like this yeah yeah so towing is actually very boring for what i do like on my side of it for instance like i'm in samson right now but if i was in super donkey for instance um you know for the most part i really it's really just i'm just gonna go i'm gonna get a call right and then somebody's gonna be like yo i need i need a tow I need, you know, a tire change, I need whatever the case is, right? And then um, I go do it and then that's it. Like there's no real, there's no real excitement inside of what this part of what I do of the industry is. So for instance, um, you know, something like maybe like a police officer, there's probably more excitement being a police officer because you don't know what you're going to deal with. But this, you, you pretty much know what's coming at most times. I mean, even though you can't get those curveballs every now and again, for the most part, it's pretty boring. Number two, um, for the most part, right, the towing industry, uh, customers are, you, they're upset with you. They're upset with you about their problem. So you actually are a problem solver. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you're on the side of the road, most of the time, nine times out of 10, most people don't expect that they're about to be breaking down anytime soon, right? So when it happens, it's like the worst thing in the world for them uh, because they got somewhere to go, they got somebody they gotta see, and now they're not only probably not gonna get to that place like they're supposed to or see that person when they gotta see them, but they're about to spend some money, right? You know, every time somebody gets a call or, you know, just, just imagine the best way to put this, the best way to put this is you coming up and somebody's downfall in the towing industry. It's real, it's a real, it's, a, it's kind of a tragedy, I ain't gonna lie. It's a necessary evil, but most people are not gonna be happy to see you depending on which side of the equation of the towing you're on, which is gonna bring me to my next point. Point number three, depending on which side of the towing industry uh, you're on is how people are gonna react to you. So for instance, like I say, when I come through, people usually show love, you know, they happy, you know, I good customer service, price is right, uh, time is right, you know, the situation is ideal for a bad situation, right? And I try to make that transition as simple as possible for people. But let's just say you on the repo side. Most people know that their car is up for repo. I mean, let's be honest. You knew you wasn't making them payments, you feel me? So it ain't like, it ain't like, they're surprised, but they're still upset. They're upset that they didn't pay the bill and that, you know, the people can't collect their collateral because that's what it is. So the, the hostility you're going to get is going to be drastically different from somebody that's transporting cars to helping somebody on the side of the road to repossessing cars because there's many different facets or faucets, facets of this industry that you can go in, you just have to pick which one that you want. But you're gonna get reacted on differently depending on which part you're in. Man, hey, this last one, no, not last one, the next to last one, we are gonna go to five. Yo, if y'all stayed this long in the video, yo, like the video right now. Like, stop the video, like the video, share the video with somebody, let them know, yo, you got a homie out here that's putting out this game. Yo, give that positive energy to the universe for me, man. Do this for me, like, share, subscribe right now, all right? Um, point number four, all right? Oh, 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 hold on. I forgot. We, let's, let's jump to a commercial real quick. 
Listen, man, I'm tired of people hitting me up talking about, yo, know, what can I do? How do I start? All this, that, and the third. Listen, man, we're going to shoot over to this thing. I got the Roadside Guide to Profits ebook available. Now, it's not necessarily for the beginners, but you can use it as a guideline. If you need more help than that, yo, I'm offering a consultation. Give me a call, book a call. I'm leaving a link in the description below. Visit the website. I want to help you be successful in the towing industry. I want to help you be successful in the roadside game because, I mean, they're two different worlds, but they work one and the same. If you even want to learn how to make money on turning wrenches i'm telling you yo it's 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 plenty of opportunity out there the bigger the space the more competition but also the more possibility for revenue if you need help with that if you need to talk to somebody if you need to reach out and and trying to kind of guide which way you even want to go with this whole thing tap in with the homie let's go ahead and get you started in the roadside and towing industry back to the episode now, this next one, man, is it, it was a hard pill for me to swallow at one time. I got to walk over to the battle at real quick. It was a hard pill for me to swallow at one time, right? But people are going to judge you on your equipment. Let me show you exactly. This is a perfect example of what I mean. Watch this. If I pulled up in this, let's just say I pulled up in this, right? And I have a wheel lift on here. It's a Chevy. Old school Chevy. Heavy Chevy, right? Now let's just say, now this is, is not, I think it does run and drive, but the tires and flat has been sitting here for so long. But let's just say I pulled up in this. I'm going to get a completely different response than if I pulled up in this. Now, even though it's not new, it is newer, it is cleaner, blah, 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 right? People are going to judge you. But even worse, there's people like shiny things. Let me show you something. I ain't even showed y'all the battle light. The battle light on 24s right now. But if I pull up in the battle light on them things, right? <laughs> People going to look at you differently. It is one of the hardest truths of this whole industry, man. Like depending on what part of this industry you in, the the so okay, okay, okay. I got a buddy who tows exclusively for Mercedes, right? He can't pull up in something like this. He can't pull up in something like this. At the end of the day, he has to like he has to keep up with the image. I know somebody else that's on police rotation. He boasts and brag about his new equipment, but I get it. He has to, I mean, he don't have to boast and brag, but he has to keep up with the Joneses because people are judging you. They don't want to call you out there looking any type of way. I completely understand it. Now, even if your, 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 your job is superior as far as your quality of work, if your customer service is there, right? They don't care. You cannot know what you're doing, but because you pulled up in something that looks good, they're going to assume that you do know what you're doing. I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. So ju your judgment is going to really come on equipment. How your change look? How does your dress attire look? How does your truck look? How clean is your truck? I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I did not realize how big appearance is. I'm getting it more now. So I'm going to make sure I stay, you know what I'm saying, cleaned up a little bit, a little scruffy right now, you know what I'm saying, a little scruffy. But, you know, I get it, though. I get it. And so I act accordingly. And you have to do the same thing. And you don't really have to. And let me let me let me break that down real quick. Again, it depends on what industry you are in, right? So I know some people who do hot shotting, and they have older trucks. Their older trucks, just like myself, gives them significantly less problems than the guys that come up super clean in brand new trucks that are breaking down to like fifteen thousand miles. I mean, I'm telling you, this literally happens. Like no cap. You can just 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 talk to some people. It don't happen for everybody, but most people that I see, it seems like they have a lot of problems with the with the newer equipment versus the older equipment as far as how much you have to put in to maintain. But like I say, presentation is key. So however you come out here, that's what people you, they, they just that's just what it is. They're gonna judge you, man. I mean it, it sucks, but it is what it is. So just keep that in mind. Now if you're doing something like repo where you kinda ducking in and out at nighttime and you cutting corners and stuff like that, like Maybe it's a little bit different because people at that point, your job is to not even be seen. <laughs> but if your job is to be visible, hey, man, I, I'm, I'm living proof. I've, I get treated differently when I come out one way versus coming out another way. Yo, number five, number five. Uh, it's right in your face. You probably don't even realize it. Tow is extremely dangerous, man. Like, I don't know if they, we get enough credit as tow providers. Um, but you know, the other day I'm doing this job and I'll probably shoot to a clip if I got it in here, but I'm literally like two feet away from this four lane highway doing a tire change. And, uh, while there was places for this lady to go, it was a sketchy situation because I didn't want to break the rim because the distance in which we had to go would have 
it would have definitely put some pressure on that rim. And it might not have broke it. It might have bent it a little bit. I'm not too sure. But at the end of the day, uh, it it was it was just it was, it's dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. And so y'all know sometimes I bring my kids with me. And a lot of times I don't, you know what I'm saying? Um, because I just, I just can't, it is a very dangerous industry and there's not enough credit, uh, being put out to toll to providers, in my opinion, for how dangerous it can be out in this role. But ain't nobody looking for no pity party because it ain't like you didn't sign up to do this thing that you knew was dangerous, but maybe you didn't know. And that's the point of this point right here. If you didn't know, now, you know, it is extremely dangerous. Winch cables can break, tires can break, liability is through the roof, and this is why the insurance on it, particularly, is super expensive. And you have to keep those things in mind before you're actually, or even if you're in the industry. I mean, if you're in it, you know it, but you may not put a lot of emphasis on how dangerous it really, really is. Your life is at stake every day. Like, you are a first responder in a lot of ways, so don't let that go over your head. Listen, man, if you stayed this long, man, I appreciate this. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do for y'all. But listen, again, your homie's out here trying to help. We're going to give it a bonus tip real quick, though, man. Tip number six, that something is right in your face that you might not realize. Is it glitching? I'm doing this off my phone. I left the GoPro at the house. So, yeah. Either way, um, what you may not realize, though, is there's a lot of tow providers. There's a lot of tow providers, but there's not enough tow providers. Um, you know, I, I'm going to go into depth in depth with this, um, further, but trying to replicate myself, like I'm big on customer service. Like I'm big on people. Like I love people. I try to stay away, but I try to stay close at the same time and make sure I got my posts, you know what I'm saying? To these streets. And I love people. Somebody asked me, shout out to my homie, uh, uh, Ozzy at Toe Vibes. Um, he, he's like, bro, make a video about why you got into towing. And I'm going to sum it up real quick and I'm going to make a full video about it. I was doing the mechanic thing. I was trapping right out of that battle lack that's sitting right over there, right? Matter of fact, I first started doing it in a Chevrolet Aveo, believe it or not. I'm talking about load it down. I'll put my cherry picker in there. I swear to God, like literally. And um, long story short, I started need, I started getting customers that I needed to bring to the house because I was working at the house at a, at a certain point, right? I could not find a reliable source. People that I knew told, I couldn't, I, I would call them. They ain't calling me back. I got people waiting. I can't, it would turn into a nightmare and I could not find a provider that gave the quality service in a timely manner that I needed. So I went out and bought a trailer or a dolly first and then a trailer and then eventually the tow truck. And well, here I am now. And then, you know, there's a lot of us out here, but not a lot of people want to do the work. And if they do want to do the work, they might not want to do the work for you. So this is why it's, it's simple, man. You can come out here. I got a dolly over here, matter of fact. Hold on, I'm gonna show you what I mean. I forgot I even had this thing. <laughs> but this tow dolly right here that's got control arms on it from this um, uh, OBS that uh, got over here at the shop uh, is all you really need, <laughs> at least for light duty. And because of this, uh, that's why there's so many tow providers out there. But a lot of guys don't really want to work. I mean, the, the truth be told, they really don't. They, they just want to, they want it a simple way. And I get that a thousand percent. This kind of where my whole roadside guy to profits even came from because it's pretty easy. If you want to do it a certain way, it just depends on how you want to go about it. But the hungrier you are, you know, the more money you can make. But like I say, I, I have to debate whether it's actually a race to the bottom sometimes because depending on what part of the industry you're in, like motor clubs, insurance companies, police rotation, transportation, um, um, you know, PPIs, it, it's all different facets of this whole ideal. But there's a whole lot of us. There's not enough of us, but there's too many of us at the same time. It's crazy. So listen, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Uh, I got to work on Samson. Uh, I'm at my shop right now. I'm about to get in some exercise real quick. I'm coming back, jumping on this thing. I got a thousand things coming on. I promise y'all I got all types of stuff going on that's like positive for the channel, positive for life, and um, lead by example, man. So you'll see what's going on. Like, share, subscribe. Thank y'all for tapping in with the homie. Let me go ahead and get back to this work, man, so I can get back to this money. Catch y'all on the next one, man. Thank y'all again for tapping in. Until next time, mi gente. Be promo de beneficio. Siempre. Peace.